name's Grandad. You join us on this beautiful crisp December morning. Um, and you'll be relieved to hear there's no paintbrushes this week. He's that warm, he's took the window out. Yeah. <laughs> mm. No, we're going to be plying the kitchen area today. Hold this while you just go and mark it outside if you like. Have you got your pencil? I think it's your pencil. Yeah. Oh, it's getting very, very cold. Okay. It's getting very, very cold. My fingers are like ice. Okay. Yeah. Well, so just poke around, and see what you do. been doing so far is uh, measuring the ply and taking it outside and cutting it up to the right sizes um, we have to do one at a time it's the boat isn't straight and everybody else who's been doing a boat you know that there's no straight lines anywhere so yeah so we're just taking one at a time and doing all the measurements for each one we've been lucky with the weather again um, especially for December and we've been able to work outside because uh, space is slowly diminishing. Yeah, yeah, snug. 
We're using 9mm um, WBP ply, which is stands for wa um, weather and boil proof ply, and that's just to stand um, a classification for the glue that's used to veneer the sheets of uh, thin sheets of ply together. It just withstands the elements a bit better, and that's all. So, sort of damp and moisture and etc. It shouldn't break down that veneer as easy. Most of this plywood you can see being put on the walls here is going to be covered with a tile backer board and that's going to be 6mm thick um, and that's just basically because all um, the majority of the walls will be tiled so it gives it a good key for the tiles to stick to, to the wall. For this last bit of the window opening we're just uh, measuring along how much needs to be cut off um, whereas the other piece we obviously drew round the window but we can just uh, add it on just do a measurement on that last bit it was quite easy it also didn't matter that the join wasn't going to uh, be at the edge of the window on this one because like Adie said it's going to have a backer board on and tiled so you won't see any of the joints of the plywood anyway easier to go along with the with a saw in there. Mm. Which is nine inches, twenty three, two thirty mil from the edge. And what did I just say that other measurement was? Uh, I'll just put a little line on here. Fifty six and a half, I think you said, five six five. Do you want me to check it? Mm. Yeah, five sixty. 560. Yeah. 560. Yeah. So that is our start. That's the box. Right, yeah, so that's that box. These ones were going above the worktop but not as high as that, weren't they? They were going. Yeah. And we wasn't having any 12 volt here either, it was just a two. There's no USB. No, that's that end, that's isn't it? End, yeah. yeah. If you get a straight line off that, so that, that socket square. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have plenty of little boxes to tile around. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, challenge. Yeah, so that'll be right. So the next one, that one, the, the, the double socket is going to start on the edge of that end. Yeah. Uh, can the double socket mm. go between it? Well, it would it go between it? Between. Yeah, well, you mean, you mean the can we can we fill it in? Can we? Yeah, yeah, so it's sort of... We need a double socket then, don't we, to trace around. Oh, how high do you want that? Um, have we cut any other sockets out no, here yet? No, Right, Unless we don't want it. We don't want it too low because we don't know how high the worktop's going to be yet. No. That's the height of the socket then. Okay, so then at the side we need two more then. Yeah, and we need to measure and where this is. And they're the same height as that, aren't they? Yeah. 23. Singles on there like that. Yeah. If it can come in, because um, obviously we'd have to overlap the window, oh, yeah. the window trimming. So it'd be a little bit close. I'm just thinking. Yeah, just make sure. Maybe what, see what we've got can can we measure it from this one 
and then know that just after that and then put them together. That is ten and a half inches from that, so if you come in from that and come in and make it twenty five two fifty. Dark yep. in there because that misses that one. Yeah. Twenty five. I'll probably only just get two in there anyway. Right, so that's where it starts. And that's where it the end of it's coming to, yeah? We'll work around it with the trim. Right then, so we've got the light switch. Double socket. Double 230 socket. Two fuse switches for the tumble wash machine and tumble dry, yeah. The window opening. Window opening. That's it on this one. Is that it? That's all. <laughs> right. What are you using for this? Multi tool. I'll cut these with a the multi tool. Yeah. But um, I'll use a jigsaw, a circular saw to do these and then that on. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So that's one side now completed the boat, just the other side to do now. And you rejoin us now back at NASA for some more foil wrapping. And as you've probably seen before on previous vlogs where we've been doing this uh, insulation, I'm just cutting away where the seams overlap. It's not necessarily necessary between the gaps of the battens, but where the gap battens are, we didn't want like a double layer. It's so that the, when the wall lining goes on, it's the wall lining runs true to the side of the boat. There's no light deviation. Is that quite uh, level there? No, or is there still an angle? It's like it's got to come. Yeah, it's on an angle, yeah. Yeah. That'd be all right for them though, won't it? Yeah, because if you use that, that's that's okay there. Yeah. It's just the bottom runs out. We're going to have to trim this back a bit. Do you reckon the bulkhead is slightly at an angle? I think it must be. Yeah. Unless these aren't particularly level. It's sat on top of that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but even when we put that one up. If we put, that, if we put this up, it's going to make that end go down, isn't it? Like yeah. It, it's le it looks level on the top of the, there, look. Yeah. It looks level there-ish. I think it's just this bulkhead that Yeah, I, I think it could be the bulkhead, you know. It's not completely 
straight it sort of like angles slight little bit yeah anyway so we're let's have, get these marked we're gonna have to cut some off this end here to get that level to that and now just scribe in the end <clears throat> It's got to come this way a little bit because it's not touching the bottom, so I can work that out when I put it out. Cut it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So two and a half inches all the way around and then that will give the same gap as the other side. We're running out of space, do you? <laughs> the more we do, the tighter it's getting. She cried. So that bit's in place. Right, just this one little bit on the wall. As well, this leave a little tiny gap well a little gap there again for the expansion yeah where would you like me to hold it like just on yeah like that this side of that yeah. just the side of that should be right yeah <coughs> oh, excuse me right. two inches in 26 down we're back on inches today yeah it's whatever falls, whatever <laughs> falls right yeah. whatever looks best on the tape measure yeah i'll just get a bit of wood to go across that line not the bit I've cut, the other side. Yeah, so 26 down. Never stay a lot. <laughs> We've just put in some screws. Just to temporarily hold the whole boards up. Um, they've all got to come down again to be treated on the back and then they'll be finished off properly. Whoa, that's a big kitchen. And I've yeah. got the cupboards in the other at the other end, so it, really? it might take it off, but it looks yeah. Looks big. Sorry, Left the gap for uh, expansion, and these will be the USBs, but they're going to be in a a like a mm, like an end, like boxed end. Or yeah, something. boxed end before the dinette. We'll call it boxed end. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's in London somewhere. <laughs> right, well, that's that bit done. We've now got to work out how we do the bit behind there. Be Where do we put everything? Um, we'll have a think about that one, shall we? I think we should think a lot about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not looking forward to it. So the following day we found a space for all that stuff. I'm not going to spin the camera around and show you the other end of the boat. Um, it looks but, like step toes yard. <laughs> yeah, but we're getting really good at walking in a very, very tight straight line. We'll be great at doing the beam. The beam, yeah. Yeah, yeah. tight rope. Yeah, crystal maze. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be good at all that. I've removed the steps from the back of the boat, from the stern of the boat, just so I can get to this bulkhead to put the foil on and also to fit the uh, bottom section of the plywood. We do realise we've got a lot of holes still to drill in this for sort of the electrics to go through, the gas feed from outside from the gas locker, um, the Eberspatcher pipe work and, well, it's not may not be an Eberspatcher, but a diesel heater pipe work for the radiators and the water pipes for the clarifier but for now we just want to concentrate on getting this uh, the wall linings on uh, and then we're just going to drill all the holes out at a later date same goes for all the other walls under the gunnels in the boat until we've got the appliances and we know exactly where they're going to sit we won't be drilling any further holes in the in the boat and fitting any more uh, skin fittings until we've actually got them in situ and that's similar to uh, some of the bits that we haven't done on the ply. Uh, there's still some more plug sockets and everything to go to be cut into the ply in the kitchen. But until we get the appliances, we don't want to risk putting them in the wrong places. Um, so just once we've got the cooker, the fridge, yeah, um, and things like that, we're, we're not going to we're not going to attempt to cut any more holes. So I think this is the last bit of the foil in the kitchen. Um, he does love a bit of foil. Can't wait to see what my Christmas presents wrap like. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure from the floor height to the underneath of that where that ply runs across there, so that this sheet of ply we've got just here will tuck under. So I'm going to take a measurement from the floor to there. I'm just going to leave a little bit of probably five mil gap so it's not actually touching the floorboards, the uh, floor at the bottom, so the floor can come out if ever we need to, so it's not a tight fit. So yeah, I'm going to do that now. Um, I'm going to take the measurement, I'll cut this ply down and then I'll show you where we're at from there. So that's that bit of ply cutting out from this bulkhead. Um, that's where the cupboard side will be, well the front will be fixed into there. Down that seam, tied that seam. And then obviously I've got to cut a bit of ply that's going to go across there where the steps are going to come into the boat. And then that's all cut round the swim on that side. I'll just slow this bit of ply up if I can with one hand just to show you 
how this is going to fit. There we go. That's going to go across into that corner. I'll cut this obviously now to to match up with the uh, swim on the boat. Now I've got the bulkhead onto the engine bay in place. I'm going to get this piece of ply now and cut this out for the cut this out. I'm going to have to cut a groove into this bit of ply so that it fits there and then fits back against against there. So there's a piece going on top of that as well. What I've done is I've marked where this sort of finishes and starts to level out on the boat. Put a little mark on the floor so I know that that's where the cut's got to finish. And then I've slid that along and I've marked pencil line the height of here. So I've just got to cut across there now and line it up with the pencil line on the floor that I've marked off that mark on the floor. So I know that I've got to cut this piece to there. So yeah, I'm going to get that to the jigsaw now and just run along that, that line. Where the plywood meets the top corner, there's actually no batten or anything in that bit. It's that it's the um, gunnel area, so it's sort of like uh, in a curve slightly. So um, there's no batten there. So what Aid is doing here is adding a piece of batten onto the bulkhead wall, onto the ply, so the, the side wall can fit up to that, and it's got something sturdy at the back of it to hold it in place. So that's all that one finished and that side we're getting less and less space to work in mm. so we've just got to find somewhere for all this to go now yeah that's good happy with that yeah 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 there's just that bit to be put on over the step Oh, yeah. uh, all cut, just ready to put on. Yeah, just... that's there, isn't it? Yeah. I'll show you that. Yeah, that's going. Yeah. Between there. That's, that's all... great. We're just sort of in three and whatever on the back. Yeah, and we're, we're taking plenty of that at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're sponsored, sponsored by... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. We should be. <laughs> we should be. Yeah, I suppose. High roof and power seat tomorrow, blue coast cement. <laughs> when we ventured out for the first time after we was ill, um, we saw this Christmas tree on the front of our boat. So we've decorated it, covered it in baubles, and it's there for Christmas. Um, we suspected who it was, and we found out it was definitely him. So thank you, Fraser. Cheers, cheers Fraser. Bye. Uh -huh.